When were the gospels written, my friend? According to your scholars, they were written long after Jesus. Some say bloody in the third century. Do you have any evidence? You are going to get angry with this answer. Bar Ehrman. This insane claim was recently made live on my channel. If you've spent any time in YouTube comments, you've no doubt seen similar blatant lies coming from Muslims. Today, I'm going to explore why they do this. Here's a hint. They don't have a choice if they want to spread Islam. Watch to the end to see how I've reached that conclusion. Welcome back to Reasoned Answers, the channel devoted to careful exploration of theological issues, especially related to Islamic Christian relations. Recently, Lloyd de Jong and myself had a show exploring the long history of silly, contradictory, and blatantly ahistorical Muslim claims about the Apostle Paul. We opened up the stream for Muslim responses and were joined by Safras Hussein. Did he respond to the various Muslim scholars we quoted that espoused utter nonsense, confusing Paul with King Saul, thinking Constantine was the son of Pontius Pilate, and so forth? Of course not. Instead, Sapras launched into a Dawa script, attempting to prove Paul was rejected according to the New Testament by quoting Jesus' words in Revelation. Yes, he accepted a book where Jesus speaks as God from heaven as accurate in a desperate attempt to discredit Paul. Once off script, he had no clue how to answer anything, resorting to bizarre, contradictory claims admitting he didn't know the book of Ephesians existed, and saying variously, Paul corrupted the Gospels, Constantine corrupted the Gospels, and the Gospels weren't even written until the 3rd century. When were the Gospels written, my friend? Uh, according to, not me, according to your scholars, they were written long after Jesus. Tell me how long after Jesus, please. Some say, some say bloody in the third century. I, I, may, I, may I ask you to give me a reference where somebody says, who is my scholar, supposedly, that the Gospels were written in the third century. Do you have any evidence? You are going to get angry with this answer. Bar Ehrman. What did Ward Ehrman said? Please tell me. He is saying earliest Gospels that are found is about 3rd, 3rd century. When asked where Ehrman made that claim, he had no answer. You, wait, I have to go onto the YouTube, but I've watched all videos, i watched them all. I Crazy. said article. Do you, what do you, do you mean know article? the difference between article? His article, he writes articles. What do you oh, mean by that? <laughs> he's, wrong, he's written books. On yeah, this. where is which which book says that? Oh my god, they have gone into it now. Oh my god. Mate, he's written books. Who's written that? He's written books. Which on, one? On this. Okay? Which one? Oh my god. 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 When pushed, he pretended to have internet issues, consulted with a friend, and eventually came back with a more specific, but equally insane claim. Baba ba 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 in his book called Forged. Forged. He's wrote a book. Mr. Fraz, which page should we go to see what you are claiming? Mate, I've not got the book on me. If I had a book on me, I would have. Sir Fraz, we are going to find the book for you. Tell us which page should we go to on that book? I've got no page, but I've read an interview. So of you are him. lying. Mate, he's, re he's written a book called Forge, which proves that the four Gospels are unknown authors just... and they were written centuries after. In response, I issued the following challenge. You claimed that Bart Ehrman says that the Gospels were written in the 3rd century AD. If I offer to pay you $1,000 to give me the quote where Bart Ehrman said that, will you agree to give me something of value in return? Specifically, will you agree to tear up your Dawa scripts and stop giving these terrible arguments and investigate matters for yourself? I will, I will, I will send you a link here. 
It's a simple um, question. Do you accept the challenge? You can put the link later. You can put it at any time. Do you accept that challenge? If you're able to do that, then I will pay you $1,000, where Bart Ehrman says that the Gospels were written in the third century. Not that some manuscript was written in the third century, but that the Gospels were written in the third century. Will you agree to stop doing this Dawah crap in return? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah All yeah. right. Notice how I specifically said, not some manuscript. It didn't take long after the stream ended for Safras to post the following comment. Here you go, reasoned answers. Bart Ehrman saying no complete manuscripts in first three centuries. <laughs> I, of course, responded that wasn't what the challenge was. $1,000 was on the line. Did he get angry and claim I cheated him? No. All he did is repeat, I said earliest manuscripts, ignoring my comment. He never bothered to claim the actual challenge had been met. Why? because he knows he's lying and that he has made a false promise. And he simply does not care. As Christians, our first inclination might be to say this is a problem with Safraz. However, he represents a pattern. Muslims who are the most active in YouTube comments are habitual liars. They'll admit their argument doesn't work in one comment, then repeat the same argument on the next video, as if nothing ever happened. Now, I want to be perfectly clear here. I'm not suggesting all or even most Muslims lie. I get many comments from honest Muslims, but those conversations typically end quickly and aren't what I'm referring to. Rather, what I'm suggesting is that one particular type of Muslim is a habitual liar. The type who disputes with Christians in YouTube comments as a form of dawah. And as we are about to see, there's a reason why they act this way. A quick internet search will reveal that lying is forbidden in Islam. To us, that's a clear moral command. However, we have to understand Islam as well-informed Muslims understand it. Islam is not a religion based on moral principles. It's a religion based on rules, or put differently, a religion of laws and lawyers. The Quran is not the ultimate authority in Islam. The scholarly consensus, that is the opinion of the lawyers, on how to interpret the Quran and the Sunnah is the ultimate authority. Wow. As such, we need to turn to the legal, or Sharia, guides to understand Islam. Let's take a look at what Reliance of the Traveler, the most popular such manual, states on lying. Primary texts from the Quran and Sunnah that it is unlawful to lie are both numerous and intersubstantiative, it being among the ugliest sins and most disgusting faults. Because of the scholarly consensus of the Ummah, it is prohibited. Well, there you go. Lying is prohibited. Case closed. Well, no. Remember, Islam is a system of laws, and laws have exceptions. The thought concludes, Our only concern here being to explain the exceptions to what is considered lying and a prize of the details. In Islam, lying is prohibited, except when it isn't. Reliance continues, The Prophet did not permit untruth in anything people say except for three things, war, settling disagreements, and a man talking with his wife or she with him. This is an explicit statement that lying is sometimes permissible for a given interest, scholars having established criteria defining what types of it are lawful. Reliance interprets this statement generally, and I think they are correct. In Islam, Muslims are always at war, with non-Muslims, so that covers the first group. The second covers Muslim acquaintances, and the third, family. If lying achieves a good end, tricking non-Muslims or smoothing over a relationship, it is a good thing to do. The end justifies the means. Uh -huh. Furthermore, Reliance explains that it isn't the intention of the speaker that matters, but rather the technicalities of what is said. 
It is religiously more precautionary in all such cases to employ words that give misleading impression, meaning to intend by one's words something that is literally true, in respect to which one is not lying while the outward purport of the words deceives the hearer. In Islam, deceptive speech isn't lying, because everything is based on legal technicalities, not moral precepts. Non-Muslims would never understand Islam until they realize such legalistic thinking is a core difference between how they perceive morality and how Islam does. No doubt, the average Muslim is not directly aware of these rulings, but the kind of Muslim deep into Dawah surely does know. They are certainly in disagreement with Christians and usually view themselves at war as well so lying becomes permissible in their minds. And just to be safe, they'll word their posts so they can, in their mind, say the words are technically true, even though a natural reading conveys a different, false meaning. But actually, it gets worse. Reliance explains, If something is obtainable through both telling the truth and lying, it is unlawful to accomplish it through lying, because there is no need for it. When it is possible to achieve such an aim by lying, but not by telling the truth, it is permissible to lie if attaining the goal is permissible, and obligatory to lie if the goal is obligatory. So, lying is not just permissible, but obligatory if the outcome is obligatory and truth won't accomplish the desired end. Is it obligatory for Muslims to wage war on non-Muslims? Yes. Yes. Is it obligatory for Muslims to give dawah? Yes. Yes. Is it obligatory to continue until all the world has converted to Islam, or at least agreed to acknowledge their inferiority and live as subjugated people? Yes. 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 So the end is obligatory. But how can Muslims accomplish that end? Can they convince anyone to convert to Islam by telling the truth? Absolutely not. Islam is morally depraved and intellectually bankrupt. The only possible way to get an average person to convert is to trick them. Lie about magical preservation of the Quran. Lie about scientific miracles. Lie about women's rights. Lie about being peaceful lie about Muhammad, lie about what the Quran and Sunnah say, or best of all, lie about what Christianity teaches and avoid talking about Islam at all. The Dawagandists, the sophisticated ones anyway, know exactly what they are doing. They are attempting to accomplish the end by whatever means are necessary and are following the Sharia guidance on obligatory lying. For this reason, Islam has built a whole system of guidance on how and when to lie. To learn more about that, click here. Thanks for watching.